welcome to Thriving Rockstar with Alex Draken. Today's guest is Ryan Van Puderian. Um, Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. Great job on pronouncing my name. Yeah, <laughs> I practiced. Awesome. <laughs> so how how are you doing these days? What are you up to? I'm doing great, man. I'm uh, keeping nice and busy. I'm um, started our new band called A Monolith with. Uh, a uh, member of Devin Townsend Project, Brian Waddell. We've been brothers for a very long time. So now that Devin Townsend Project's on hiatus, are pretty much broken up is like how I like to say it. Um, you know, we decided to, to not sit there and wait and see what's next. We wanted to create something that we thought was really cool. So we did this and it's amazing. So that's going great. Um, you know, I'm still doing my uh, health and uh I don't know. I don't like to call it positive thinking. It's just a very positive outlook on giving people advice on things that have worked for me. It's not like I'm life coaching them, but uh, I have my RVP Health Body and Mind page on Facebook that does really well. And uh, I just share my thoughts there, man. Yeah. All the stuff that has worked for me, stuff that I failed at but have learned from, all the stuff I've succeeded with. I share that with people and I say, hey, this has worked for me and this is where I've learned some really deep lessons, you know, maybe this could work for you too. So I'm, I'm huge on that and then the other thing too is uh, get my workout in five days a week, you know, which I'm going to do after this interview. Right. That's awesome. So, you know, things are going great in my life. Uh, I'm keeping super busy teaching, doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you, you got a lot going on and I love that you're in... Um that you're about the positive thinking, the health, and the, the whole mindset, the whole thing, I'm, you know, half of the conversation that I'm having here um, is all about that. And I think it's an integral part of being a, uh, a musician or being a person, really. And um, a lot of, there's a lot of lack of that in our industry. There so, is. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, especially when you get into heavier music, too. You yeah. know, it's like, I find it can be so focused on negativity, you know? I hate yeah. to use that word, though. Um, but, yeah, it, it seems to be in there quite a bit. Whereas even when the Monolith album comes out, you're going to see it's definitely not that take. Right. You know, but I, I agree with you. It's, mm. uh, it can be, be a little difficult uh, in this industry. But, hey, that's why there's guys like you and I, you know, to, to bring out a positive message. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I'm, I've been looking forward to this conversation because, uh, yeah, these are topics that definitely need to be brought up. And like you said, there's a lot of negativity. And, um, it, like, I, I, was, I, I, was, I noticed, like, yeah, there's hesitation in using, like, positivity and all these things because, like, they're so played out in, you know, on social media um and they've become memes right uh, but nonetheless they're very important topics that need to be discussed in detail and um expounded upon so people can understand why you need to think that way so i find it, at least in the metal uh the whole metal world that, that there's a lot of this uh, negativity and like lobster mindset if somebody is starting to succeed it's like oh they're sellouts and yeah, they try to drag them down in different ways, and and I think it's very toxic. Um, conversely, if you if you look at like say the hip hop world, right? They talk a lot about like oh I the success this that and and they they're doing pretty well, right? Yeah, so Man, doing awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? That's that's positive for the music industry. It's like, mm -hmm. do, do I listen to hip hop daily? No, my my wife does all the time. You know. But uh, there's some great stuff on it. You know, it's not my first choice of music to go to or anything. And But uh, I, I respect the way that that's gone. And, and you know what? There There is a positive vibe around that, that style of music. You know, there is a negative side to it, too, that I've heard. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, not to get too deep into that. I think all genres have it. There's just some more than others that tip towards that positive side. And there's some more than others that can tip towards the negative side. And, uh, you know, in the end, though, really what it comes down to is it's you as an individual. Right. Are you going to look at this positively or are you going to look at it negatively? For myself, I always look for the positive, even the positive in the negative. There's some things you cannot deny that are negative. But 
I, I truly believe that you can find a positive in every negative. Right. It's, it's one thing I was taught from a very young age. So, you know, getting back to the music industry thing, I, I think there's lots of positives in, in metal music, for example, or prog, or does it could be hip hop, you know, and then vice versa, you know, hip hop can have some negatives to it, you know, and uh, along with all the positives. So what are you looking for? You know what I mean? How, how are you going to make your day better? It's like if I if I listen to hip hop music and something's catchy, I'm not going to deny it. You know what I mean? To, right. to, to be negative about it because I don't listen to that style of music, right? So, again, it comes back to you as an individual. That's right. what I really think it comes down to. Right. And I think it's important to realize the, um, the effects that having more of a negative outlook have on a an artist's career or um, the kind of thing that they're sharing with people. I, I, so I started writing uh, a book on these topics basically um, and why it's important to work on yourself as a person and as an artist and I find that you know the where a person is coming from especially an artist you know you're someone who could affect a lot of people and people take their music very seriously and they take the messages to heart and if the content of the art is one which doesn't promote well-being you know then that's kind of like a poison that could spread right now of course you know we can reflect on the bad things that have happened but it's really what what is being aimed at ultimately you know is it is it something yeah. like you know like that that time sucked for me and and this is what i've learned from it like what you're saying or is it like things will always be terrible and and just this uh that kind of pernicious mindset um so i mean Misery loves company, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think we're probably predisposed to think negatively. Um, just f survival and all of those things that um, evolution people talk about. And uh, so we, we need to make sure that we kind of combat that with um, looking at things in a way that's going to be more constructive. Yeah, more mm -hmm. constructive and, and beneficial. You know, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't help that we have the internet these days. It doesn't help that, you know, uh, we have news, which from the dawn of time when it started, focused on the negative and then it give you the one happy story at the very end. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it, it's funny how everything has gravitated towards that. So it does influence people more it does people make people think oh this world is such an an awful place at times or, or whatever they you know their their perception is but the bottom line is it does come back to you the internet when i look at it is full of positivity as well mm -hmm. you can find a lot of great things to to make your life better through the internet right. uh for news, do you have to watch the local news? No, you could go to the internet or you could go to a podcast like yourself or, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Joe Rogan po podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he talks course. about, he talks about amazing positive stuff on there, but he's very neutral. He'll recognize the negative. It's not like promoting it, but he, he'll talk about it. And then he'll also look at the other side. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. And I, I believe that's what you're doing with this podcast. So, in life in general, yeah, uh, there can be a lot of negative that's focused on, but, you know, what are you going to choose right. to, to make your life better? What What are you going to watch? What are you going to listen to? You know, I would rather listen to your podcast than some guy going off about how shitty the music industry is. Thank you. Yeah, you there's, there's plenty of that. <laughs> there is. There is. And I'm, I'm frankly, I'm over it, man. You know, it's like, let's roll with the times. Let's evolve with the music industry. Yeah, streaming, sure, you don't get paid as much. I understand that. I'm a brand new artist again now, okay? It's like with a monolith, it's a brand new band. We don't we haven't even released our debut album yet. Mm. But I see a lot of upside and positive to it. Mm -hmm. I know how I'm gonna release this band to work with the ever evolving music industry. There's ways that we can make this happen and be awesome and move forward. Is it succeed or fail? I have no idea. My gut instinct tells me to succeed. That's natural for me to always look at it that way. But you know what? I'm going to evolve with the music industry to make that happen. Sure. And, and you know, it's like um, 
keeping that outlook like it's going to succeed in your mind you i don't think people have business thinking other ways if that makes sense because like th- take an uh, take olympic athletes right if you have um all the competitors in the final olympic match where the winner takes the gold right mm-hmm. every competitor in that match is 110 percent sure that they are winning gold right yep. They're, they're, they have no doubt in their minds, and if they do, they have no business being there. That's right. So, and, mm-hmm. you know, the thing is, is think about it. Yeah. Getting to that Olympic event, mm-hmm. you've already won gold, in a oh, sense. Yeah. That's how I think about it. If you're already in the mix, if you made the trip, your flight was paid for, you're staying in this beautiful hotel in the Olympic Village and all these things, well, it's already you've already proven yourself that you're a winner because you made it there. You know how many thousands of people are trying to get even just into the competition never mind the podium right right so how are you going to view this how are you going to look at it Mm -hmm. there's always got to be a positive that you can build upon and i find too many people will find the negatives a little bit too quickly then they'll deem their task or their dream too daunting and next thing you know they're working nine to five and right. they're, they're not at the Olympics. They're not gunning to be at that podium. Those people are there because they're, they always believe that they can do it mm-hmm. and they take action towards it and they never quit. Right. And so just the fact that they're there is a win. Right. That's the way that I look at it. And yeah, you know, of course, their mindset never stops there. They're there now. Let's go. And, and, yeah, not everyone wins, but again, just getting there is an amazing accomplishment. Sure. Yeah, no, it's very important. I think it's important for people to realize too that um, when when you're in a kind of a negative state and you're not uh, thinking so constructively and you're thinking how things are not going to work out and all that, there, I think you know I don't have the research in front of me, but I read that that actually limits mental bandwidth and will cut off parts of your brain. And so you'll actually be effectively uh, stupider <laughs> in, in whatever you're trying to do. And also, of course, the possibility of winning or of succeeding at whatever you're doing is that much more diminished. Um, so that, 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 that it's just I don't see a good counter argument to just looking at things positively. Well, that's it. You what you just explained is pretty self-explanatory like you nailed it on the head you, you can't if you want to give yourself a chance in life you, you got to look at all the best possible outcomes you got to recognize the negativities that could happen I, I call them calculated risks mm-hmm. that's what I take I take a lot of calculated risks in my life um, I've had some amazing results by doing that you know it's like even when I played with Devin Townsend Band, I'll tell you a little uh, story here that lots of people get inspired by. I played with Devin Townsend. I got the gig uh, in 2002. He formed the Devin Townsend Band. That only lasted till 2006 before he basically broke that up. And then a couple years later, started uh, forming Devin Townsend Project. At the time, in the hiatus of Devin Townsend Band, I was still jamming with them and, and doing stuff musically and doing drum clinics, teaching, you know. But uh, I had to make ends meet. So what do I do? I go out and I get a job. And I'd always been in the audio video industry, uh, got into installation. And then uh, next thing you know, I'm basically running this massive a uh, home theater installation company that's doing well in Vancouver. I'm making like 80 grand a year. To go. this date, the most money that I've ever made in my life, you know, year right. on a yearly basis. Sure. So fast forward to 2009, Devin forms the Devin Townsend Project, comes up to me and he says, you know, hey, here's what I want to do. We're going to tour the world. We're going to do everything. We're going to release these albums. And uh, I'm going for it. I want you to play drums for me live and record and blah, 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 blah. And I had to look at it. Everything was great. There was one thing that really stuck out, though. I would be making under a third of that $80,000 budget. Actually, yeah, it was under a third. It, was, it wasn't it was a lot of money. Wow. Like a massive pay cut. Wow. Okay. But it's a calculated risk. Could I go on it? and achieve 
do side outlets musically to, to make more money and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, it may be tough the, the first couple of years, but you're ultimately doing what you love. Okay. And that was the calculated risk for me is I'm going to lose out on a lot of money and I got to make ends meet, you know, at home, but I'm doing what I love. I'm still making money and I can create other avenues to supplement what I'd make in DTP. I took that risk. That risk was the best move I made in my life. You know, it's like, dude, I, I, I played Red Rocks Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a bucket list. I played Royal Albert Hall, one of the biggest, you know, gigs I've ever wanted to play. And sure, I've done all the festivals, play in front of 100,000 people, the Metallica, and, you know, 80,000 here, 50,000 there. That's all great. But, and then never mind the endorsements, all the, the wonderful people you meet, um, the experience. Um, nothing makes me more happy than seeing the world. This is New Zealand, Japan, uh, mm-hmm. Chile, you know, like you name it, man. I, I've been there, right? And it's been an amazing experience. But taking that calculated risk brought me all these great things. But you know what I like to call it? Happiness. You know, happiness isn't about money. Right. Okay, lots of people think, man, if I'm a millionaire, that that's just going to buy me happiness. We've heard this a million times. It's not how it works. I'm, I'm one hell of a happy guy right now. It's like, um, you know, I make a, a modest living and, and whatnot at this moment, you know. But uh, the bottom line is I love what I do and I do what I love every single day. That's and awesome. therefore, I'm very happy as a result. So taking these calculated risks can pay off in the hugest way and change your life forever you know it can it can set up a whole new road that you can benefit from in many ways so here i am at this point i'm taking another calculated risk with a monolith because it's not a known band it's made up of members from many known bands but it doesn't guarantee anything Mm -hmm. but the bottom line is i like the chances i love what i'm doing i love the music and you know with all of our prior backgrounds it gives us a decent shot of going out and, and doing something really cool with this. And you know what? I'm involved. I'm not a hired gun. I write the music, you know, with the other guys in the band. And what a feeling. And I love my time in DTP. I'm extremely grateful that I, I got the t- chance to drum with Devin and everything. But the bottom line is it's so much better when you get to contribute and write and do all that stuff rather than just being a hired gun. I you know? That. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's calculated risk. I had a couple really big bands approach me to drum with them. I can't talk about, but, you know, it was really cool, you know. But at the same time, yeah, the money would have instantly been better. But is that what I really wanted to do? Was I truly going to be happy? Was I going to get along? I get along with everyone, but you never know. You might, you might not, or you might just make a bunch of new friends. It doesn't matter. I looked at it as I'm going to be with my brothers in a band, that we put together music we love and we're going to give this a go and if it and if it blows up trust me there's there's a lot more money on the financial side to be had by doing it this way so right. again calculated risk guys you know that that's what they need to be it's like you you're not being foolish with the risk you're not just going all out and crossing your fingers you're doing your due diligence. You're looking at your life and your situation now. Can you pull this off? How are you going to make this happen? Here's the risk, but here's the payoff. Mm. You know what I mean? You have a chance of losing something, but you definitely have a chance of gaining something. And I think you just got to include those in your life if you really want to live the life of your dreams. And I've experienced it. It works for me. So there's my two cents on that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, that, you know, just what you're saying, it's like you're doing what's meaningful rather than what's expedient, yep. right? You're, you're, you're really going for, yep. um, you're doing what's meaningful. And if you make money doing it, then great. If not, you did what was meaningful, right? But if you do what makes money and it has no meaning and it just, that, I think there will be, if you think uh, in, in retrospect, you'll, you, You'll regret the things that you wouldn't, that you didn't do more than what you tried to do that's meaningful for you. This is it. And you know what I caught, you know what I call those moments? The what ifs. Mm. That's what I call them. And I talk about it in my motivational seminars all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, here's an example for you. If, if you're like, I'm going to go for that job that I know I can get. 
and it's here. It's mid mid tier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, but this is the job that I really want. And that job, you know, is top tier, but maybe you don't qualify with all the things and you know, you're not sure that you get it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people today will go for that mid tier job because they know they can get it, Mm -hmm. you know, and then they'll do that nine to five life, retired 65 if you're lucky, you know, that kind of life. But you know what they're stuck with? Well, what if I went for that? And here's the thing. If you always shoot big, which I've done my entire life, I've always shot big. Sometimes you get here, maybe maybe you hit 75%. Sometimes you nail it. Man, sometimes, and this happened in my life, I got 115%. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm not living with any what ifs. And a monolith, for example, would have been a massive what if to me if I didn't follow through with it and I just took another hired gun gig. Because right now I'd be thinking, okay, I'm touring, blah, blah, blah. But this isn't my music. I don't get to contribute. I'm hired gun again. And what if I would have went through with the monolith? Mm. You know, it would have been a great time to do it. You know, so don't live with the what ifs. Push yourself. Success is always just outside of your comfort zone. That's mm-hmm. what I've, I've found throughout my life. And you hear that a lot from a lot of successful people. Yeah. And, you know, it's like in my multi-millionaire, again, everyone kind of bases success off money. No, I'm, I'm not. But am I doing great? Do I own my place? Yes. Do I have a nice car? Do I have a beautiful wife? I have my son? And, you know, like so many amazing things in my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm successful because this is what I've wanted to do. You know, and the beautiful thing is I'm not done yet. So Mm -hmm. I can still increase that level of success to to wherever I want it to go. It's just you got to keep pushing forward. There's three big things in life. You have to believe, you have to take action, and you can never quit. Those are the three biggest things, the three biggest attributes that any human being can apply to the life. And I continually do that. And then I have another six steps <laughs> that I teach. I call them nine steps to living a life of purpose sure. that I include with that that have gotten me uh, to where I am today. And I'm a very happy person, right? So, but those big three guys, you, you got to apply them daily. That's just, you got to believe, you got to take action, and you can never quit. That's awesome. And what are those six steps, if you don't mind sharing that here? You know what? I'll share all nine with you right now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's actually a website where you can download a free ebook. There's no mm-hmm. secret little buy this or buy that. It's just free, just because I wanted to share it with the world. It's rvpmotivation.com. You can go there and you can download it for free. But here's here's what it is. These are the nine steps, and this ebook. It's only like a half hour read. It goes through all nine steps and gives you some insight. The nine steps are believing yourself is step number one, okay? Um, Step two is dream big. Step number three is set goals. Step number four is visualize. Step number five is work hard or take action. Step number six is be grateful. Step number seven, which we haven't gotten too much into in this interview yet, but we will, is health. Oh, yeah. Okay. Step number eight is never quit. And step number nine, which is another big one, is enjoy the journey. Okay, those are the nine steps. Those are the things that I apply to my life daily. Okay, and I have a subcategory that's called the big three, and we just talked about it. And out of those six steps, the big three are believe in yourself, take action, never quit. Sure. All those things are absolutely crucial if you want to succeed at anything in your life. And everyone who has succeeded in life, follows those three steps religiously yeah it's just it's just the truth and just to to take it a little bit further think of it this way try and take just one of those steps away from the other two for example you believe in yourself and you work hard you're busting your ass every single day but take away the third one never quit you quit Mm. well if you quit it's done right? right so that makes no sense you 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 have to keep going mm-hmm. so let's let's take action okay and never quit but you don't believe in yourself 
How is that even possible? Anything that you've achieved in your life, you believed you could do it, and that's why, therefore, you took action, you never quit, you achieved it. You have to believe. Mm -hmm. It's the first and most important step. Well, let's take the third equation, okay? You believe in yourself, and you never quit believing, but you don't take action? (laughs) Come on, man. I'll tell you this right now. The number one step, if I had to bring it all down to just one step out of those nine, I always ask people this, Everyone thinks that uh, it's believing in yourself, right? The bottom line is it's not. I think that's something that that we inherently are born with, okay? Mm -hmm. We believe, for example, do our parents teach us to crawl or to take the first step? No, we don't even understand English, but we do it. It's inherently in us to succeed, Mm -hmm. okay? To believe, okay? So to me, the number one step out of the nine is take action because nothing gets done if you do not take action. And even when we're an infant and we're going to crawl, what do we do? We take action. The thought's up here and we believe we can do it. But for us to take that first step, we fall down dozens of times before we actually achieve that first step. And guess what? We never quit doing it, right? You see where I'm getting? Yeah, it's it's like a triangle. (laughs) It is. Yeah. And so there's some insight to to the nine steps that I teach. Mm -hmm. It's just something. And how I came up with them, which I get asked a lot, is um, over the years, after all the success that I I had seen, I was like, what keeps getting me back to this? You know, how am I still achieving all these great things? Getting in Modern Drummer Magazine, you know, touring the world, landing all these amazing endorsements. You know, all these crazy things, getting in drummer polls, you know, as the top prog drummer in the world several times, you know, it's like, it was crazy stuff. How did I get there? So I just broke everything down, which I think is a key life. That's how I teach drum students mm. is break things down. You will understand everything so much better, right? You get into the intricacies and, and all that stuff. So I broke down my life, and I, I'm not lying, I probably spent a couple of years on this before I finally came up with the nine steps that I really felt confident with, and that's how I came up with it. I'm like, I do these nine steps repeatedly. And you know what, it could have been seven, it could have been six. At one point, to be completely honest, it was eight steps. But I realized that I left out such an important step, and that's health, mm. you know? And I realized how much health played on uh, an important role in my life right so that's yeah. that's where the nine steps were born as i added that yeah extra you, you know step which was really important right and, you know let me jump way back to when you're talking about news and stuff like that right yeah. so all that stuff is consumption right it's like yeah. w- what what are you consuming and and what's keeping you healthy you know and so that that's from the um mental health side which we'll get into as well you know, like how you're consuming, um, you know, media and things like that and, and, and what you're putting in front of yourself, right? And you've obviously consumed a lot of great um, stuff and, you know, probably starting with your parents. I, I think I read that, you know, you had a good uh, foundation with them and, yeah. you know, family life and how that's, uh, you know, in, influenced your thinking. And, and these are, these need to be fed, right? So I'm sure you, you know, you've read some good books and you, you know, you followed Joe Rogan's podcast, big influence on yep. mine. Um, and, uh, and you continue to kind of, to feed this stuff because it's, 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 you know, like we said earlier, this is, um, there's a natural tendency to think of like what can go wrong and all of these things and, and to keep our selves, um, going forward and thinking straight, we need to, constantly tune that parts that those parts of ourselves so on, on health um i so I, i'm interested uh let, let's dive into that a little deeper sure um what what's your philosophy on eating in a general sense uh my philosophy is put good stuff in your body man you know it's like uh oh, there's so much bad stuff out there for you i, I go to the grocery store and it's funny i hit the produce section mm-hmm. and three quarters of my cart is filled up in that section. I'm vegetarian, I'm not vegan. Um, I totally understand the whole vegan thing and I deeply respect their their thoughts on it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very neutral with with that and, sure. and vegetarian. 
be honest, my wife and I, we eat vegetarian meals all the time, mm-hmm. you know, but if we, if we crave to have like last night, uh, barbecue, beautiful weather, mm-hmm. we had some burgers, you know, extra lean ground beef, you know, and that, that's just our, our choice, but great protein as well after I work out, you know, but I, I really believe that you got to put good stuff in your body and, and I can feel the difference because every year at Christmas time, I don't give a shit. I go off that oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I hit up the junk food. It's filled with white sugar and just just stuff that's horrible for you. doesn't matter. It tastes great. I'm going to drink to my heart's content. I'm going to have a great time with my friends and family, yeah. you know, and I have my cheat days. You know what? I'm going to have the pizza when I want the pizza. But I've earned that right because I've treated my body so well over the years by putting good food into it. Right. So my diet is, to be honest, probably one of the most important things when it comes to health. Mm-hmm. That's how I view it. Working out's great and, you know, mental health, all that stuff. But we're just talking about health. Your diet and, and what you eat is absolutely, to me, the most crucial thing you need to be on top of mm-hmm. because they like they say you can work out to your heart's content and you can undo it all in the kitchen right you know in a heartbeat just eating the wrong food it nullifies everything you work so hard for so the other thing too is you know like i say i, I binge at christmas every year i'm going to i love it you know it's, yeah. it's awesome i feel it right january february are usually my roughest months you know because <laughs> oh man it's like put on six seven pounds no and i feel that man oh, yeah because you know it's like i'm a drummer i'm athletic i like right. doing like i play uh tennis hockey all that kind of stuff and uh follow mma it's like all these different things right mm-hmm. and uh i feel it i notice it i notice it in my performance when i'm drumming right, right. but as soon as i'm back on my, my normal diet working on all that I feel like a million bucks and the the, the one key ingredient water right. I drink tons of water okay it is so important yeah. right mm-hmm. so uh, that that's my diet lots of veggies great uh, fats healthy fats you know fish mixed deluxe nuts that aren't aren't salted mm-hmm. unsalted ones uh, Carbs. Everyone's like, oh, carbs are so bad. Carbs are important, people. Get that through your head. Just eat the right ones. Right. You know, be smart with it. You know, get uh, get your sweet potatoes, your yams, you know, stuff like that. Like, it's energy. You need right. that when you go to the gym. It's just be careful about how you balance all these different things. Yeah, and I think it's important. But that's that's yeah. people mess. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's important what you were saying. Uh, it, it's, you know, balancing those things. People uh, approach, like many other things, they approach diet very uh, ideologically, right? Yeah, me- methodically, yeah. Well, I mean, they're, 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 it, people are religious about it a lot of times, you know? They are. And, um, and so the problem is like, like, let's say you're in the keto camp, right? And, and I've, I mess around with that time to time, but it's with yeah. an understanding uh, it's not like kind of like, oh, I just eat this way and that's it. It's like what you're saying. I go out with friends, I'll, you know, whatever, right? I'll have my burger and then, you know, and I'll eat the bun and whatever. But yep. um, it's what you do most of the time that matters. Uh, but more specifically, uh, when you were talking about carbs and demon, demonizing carbs, carbs are fuel and they're just an important, right. you know, they're just a macronutrient. And it's to understand what function food has in your body life and in your body right um and so as far as carbs are concerned you're playing drums and um so it, you're sort of like a uh a marathon runner right yep. you need enough to restore your glycogen and to you know to to have in the tank to for doing yep. what you're doing in uh you know without any sacrifices to performance you know um and so you eat for what you do Right. And if yeah. someone's kind of sitting behind a desk all day, then they should probably eat for what they do or don't do. Um, and so I guess that's why the carbs, it, demonizing them is the wrong approach because then that, that's again demonizing, right? Demonizing yeah. again, that, that's, that's, it's like religious. It's negative. You know? Yeah. It's, it's negative and, and it's not, it's not a constructive way of thinking. All food has a use. Um, 
if you can oh uh, th that is things that you qualify as food because there's certain things that i <laughs> i can't even put under this category as food <laughs> yeah yeah, right. yeah um but yeah no so I, I i'm interested um on specific stuff uh and i i speak to um the artist i talk to about like how they're eating uh, at home, like around workouts, and also definitely how they're eating on tour and and training on tour and stuff like that. And we'll we'll get into training and stuff. But as far as eating, when touring, what does your diet look like all day? Like how does how does that work? Well, you know, with with Devin Townsend Project, which obviously is my main touring thing the past fifteen years. Um, the nice thing about our our riders is our tour manager come up. He's like, "What do you want on the riders?" and I'd always request, you know, having apples, uh, bell peppers, you know, green, yellow, and orange, red uh, peppers, uh, bananas. Bananas is great energy, you know, mm -hmm. potassium and stuff for just before going on stage, I'd have a banana or something, you know, and just a little bit of an extra kick. You know, tons of water, of course, water is abundant on tours. Um, I love coffee. I love, there's a lot of great health benefits to coffee, and I'm mm -hmm. a big coffee fan. You know, I collect my... Uh, Starbucks mugs from around the world today. I'm drinking out of my Copenhagen mug, which oh, is pretty so cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's like, um, what are the other things? I, I always ask for mixed deluxe nuts, unsalted. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's some protein, but it's healthy fats, mm -hmm. you know. And then, uh, you know, you have catering or you'll get a buyout. Right. And now if you get a buyout for your dinner or whatnot, you know, we have all those nice things and and we also get like cliff bars or some some type of somewhat healthy granola sure. bars you know stuff like that just a snack on so you're kind of covering all the food groups with a rider and then you know there's other guys in the band you know who just want the potato chips doritos and coke and pepsi and that's cool man you know it's all good yeah. you know but uh you know to, to each their own but you know when it comes to a buyout or something i'm looking for a restaurant that has some healthy options you yeah. know what i mean it's like where i can get a salad in i can get some good protein in you know again i'm looking at, at all the different food groups and i'm also looking at uh how am i performing that night is it a day off if it's a day off you know what i don't mind going out and having an extra heavy carb day and eating some killer pasta in italy i'll do it you know yeah. it's like oh, yeah. i'm in italy what am i gonna exactly. do after salad you know it's like <laughs> come on man you gotta live you know what I mean? yeah i mean you're in italy but, when in rome right <laughs> right yeah exactly so uh so yeah that's that's how a, a day in the life of of touring is for me it's pretty balanced man a lot of people are like i i love this excuse when i talk to other musicians oh it's road life man and you know truck stop food i'm just like Dude, so I, I, crap, I think I, you know? I, yeah, I think there's no good excuse for not eating well on tour, and and I've been there, and I've eaten, you know, and I, when I say that, I mean like in a general sense. Obviously, there are times when yep. you're kind of in a situation where you know you don't have the best options in front of you, but um, that and and that's where supplementation plays a major role, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, like I, I, one of my interviews, um, I spoke to. Um, See, I spoke to Matt Diana of uh, Message to the Masses, and yeah. he's uh, he's a bodybuilder, and uh, he has a meal prep company, um, and so he actually does a lot of meal prep on tour. He he makes sure he has a kitchen, and they're they're not on the big bus level, right? They're more in like the sleep in the van kind of level, yeah. um, and I think it's an important thing to realize that even on that you know in, in those circumstances, you can still figure it out and yeah. and, and eat clean. And uh, your performance and everything will um, benefit, benefit from that, of course. And if you know, being out on the road is very taxing on your health um, in many ways that we'll discuss. Yep. Um, and I think a healthy diet is just so integral to you know to keeping yourself together to be able to handle all that stuff physiologically and mentally. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, if there's a will, there's a way. To put it simply. You know, and and uh, I've done those van tours, man. DTP, we go over a couple times every year, where we'd only need to be in Europe for a week or ten days or something. Do you think we're gonna get a bus for that? No, we get a splitter van. You know, and I was still eating healthy. You know, I'd take the rider, the things that wouldn't spoil, that like you don't need a fridge or whatever, 
and I'd put them in in a bag and bring them onto the splitter van. And I'm still eating my apples. I'm still eating peppers. I'd cut them up in the dressing room before we went on and put it in a bag, whatever. You know, it's like yeah. I'd even request little baggies, Ziploc bags, so I could cut stuff up and, and put them in there. So uh, you, you know. Bring- yeah, definitely. Uh, you briefly touched on having a few bananas or a banana before you go out on stage. Is that like immediately yeah. before going out on stage? No, that'd usually be about, I don't know, anywhere from, you know, 15, 20 minutes okay. before before going on stage. I want to settle a bit, right? Sure. You know, yeah, yeah. You don't want yeah, to like... Digest like, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I, I just do that. And I just found, you know, maybe it's a... I don't know. Maybe it's just it in my head, but I just found it gave me a little bit of a boost. Or, mm-hmm. you know, potassium is is a good source for you, especially when you're going out there to drum. You oh, know, yeah. for an hour and a half to two hours, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, some people may think it's a placebo thing, but for me, I I honestly felt that difference, right? And mm-hmm. and it's just a little bit of a kick, and I make sure I had tons of water. You know, and I'm not going to lie, there's times, man, where Australia, every time we tour there, it's like you play a show, you get three hours sleep, you're off to the airport to go to the next city. Right. And, you know, you're living, we always call it the no sleep tours, right? And, brutal. And, and there are times where, you know what, I kick in a Red Bull. You know, I'd have the crash like three quarters of the way through the set or something, but man, it helped. You know, and that stuff's not the best to put in your body. But no. I'm just being honest that there's mm-hmm. two sides to every story here. And it's like when you're on the road, sometimes you need to go to those levels where you, you need that extra kick. And trust me, Red Bull works. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's like, and it would get me through those tougher times where I'm sure. living off or asleep. Right? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be at not the best supplementation but uh that's supplementation right that you it know, is you you got to do what you got to do you got to k- kick of caffeine and all the other stuff that's in it and uh you know show must go on um so uh, on that front like what um it, to, f- to finish first with diet i just kind of curious uh if you have any kind of morning do you you eat um throughout the day or do you have yep. any time of uh, fasting or anything like that i've, I've tried it the- intermittent fasting thing mm-hmm. and uh i think that was more for when i wanted to cut yeah you know i'm going on a vacation or something or or you know just want to get my beach body you know get that extra little percentage lower for body fat but you know what man even now it's like i'm i'm about to go uh to los cabos for 10 days with my wife for our 10 year wedding anniversary right mm-hmm. and i'm not doing the intermittent fasting or anything I'm just eating super healthy and 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 going to the gym mm-hmm. and getting great a lot of great sleep, which is another very important factor to a healthy life. That right. affects your body, that affects weight gain, a whole bunch of things, right? But um, a day in the life of Ryan Van Buren eating, literally, I'll get up and I'll have probably two to three cups of coffee, you know, because I love my coffee. It's a good mm-hmm. way to kickstart the day. And then um, I love grapefruit. I always eat, eat uh, whole grapefruit, so I'll cut up a grapefruit. I'll have that. Um, usually, like to get a protein shake, especially I, I have protein shakes every day. I, I like them, and uh, another way of getting protein in first thing in the morning. Um, you know, I'm not just going to sit there and down a bunch of boiled eggs if I'm mm-hmm. not into. It, right? But the right. shakes a good, good kicker. Sure. And then. Uh, there's these things called Mary Crackers. I don't know if you've heard of them, mm-hmm. but they're super, super healthy, and they're all whole grain, mm-hmm. and they're, they're they're awesome. I usually like having some of those with some like natural peanut butter, just ingredients, peanuts. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. uh, again, it's it's healthy fats. It's it's good stuff. It's prepping me for the gym. It gives me some energy. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of mixing in a little bit of everything from the health groups there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it, it prepares me for for my day coming up. So get to lunch. Mm-hmm. I'll start eating a ton of vegetables. Cut up some peppers. Uh, have some fruit. Usually like uh, and in my smoothie, by the way, I'll add some like a little bit of strawberries, some berries, and and a banana. Like mm-hmm. we we freeze bananas and then we pour it in just to make the shakes a little nicer, right? Mm-hmm. And so you know midday I'll I'll do something like that and uh, start eating a ton of vegetables. Because they, they fill you up, you get the fiber in you. It's it's a, a good and another good energy boost. You know, have a piece of fruit with it. Uh, sometimes I'll even I, I like boiled eggs, but I usually eat them you know before or just after my workout. You know what I mean? And then uh, I'll go work out, 
come back, I usually have a protein fix. Sometimes it's another protein shake. Mm -hmm. Other times, like I said, it could be boiled eggs or maybe I'll, I'll barbecue some salmon because it's nice and fast. Whatever I'm going to do, right? Mm -hmm. And and then I just have a healthy dinner that's kind of a combination of all, all the food groups. And we always change it up, whether it's you know tuna or, or it's a uh, chicken breast mm -hmm. or sometimes we'll have turkey you know uh sometimes we, we we don't eat a lot of red meat we eat lots of fish you know see seafood and stuff again help now uh, and it's usually accompanied by some uh healthy carbs like sweet potatoes is a big favorite for example yeah. of the taste of them great carb for you to have mm -hmm. uh and then, you know, salads and, and or sometimes we'll saute broccoli with peppers and asparagus and onions and mushrooms. Mm. And, you know, you put that down. It tastes amazing, man. I love it. You know, put in a little bit of soy sauce with it for some added flavor and stuff. Fresh cracked pepper. Sure. Man, love that stuff. You know, one of the biggest things I love adding to everything it's not that it's really a healthy thing. It's it's actually a lot of salt. But Frank's Red Hot Sauce, you'll never get me off that. So <laughs> I'll, I'll add some of that, you know. But uh, yeah. I just I just had my physical with my doctor. And he said, man, your blood sugar levels, everything, It's people would kill to have it. You know, he's like, you're in awesome shape. You know, and, and so uh, I'm not so worried about the Frank's Red Hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. You listen, you can have, like, little things like that. I mean, sriracha has, like, its sugar and stuff, but I, you know, I like it. So good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's, you're into spicy? Love spicy. Love Indian food. Mm. You know, the anything spicy, it's like, love it. To the point of almost punishment, you know? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> They're like, how hot do you go? I'll try that, please. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like when I uh, when I went to Thailand, I had to get used to when I went for the first time. I had to get used to all the super spicy stuff, or for me, super spicy. Like for them, it's just like normal, right? I, I, my dad said it in a good way. It's like if you're not sweating a little bit, it's just not spicy enough. Like, this is it. Yeah, just, and Thai food's I, one of my favorites. There's this. Uh, place near a uh, house here in, in Vancouver and uh, it's called Chattatai and it is phenomenal just amazing Thai food so mm. but yeah again uh, you, you're right if it's if you're just not sweating a little bit it's, it's not right yeah. right yeah it's and, and and back on like you know when you're traveling like do you you let go a little bit, I'm sure, you know, and just eat the yeah. food because, like, you know, you're in a place where they have that stuff. I, it's funny because I tried this time. I, you know, I was just in Thailand for a month, and I was just, I, I at first I went in like, okay, I'm gonna eat like healthy. I'm gonna eat keto and like, you know, use shirataki noodles instead, and you know, try to cook. And it's kind of pointless to cook if you're in Thailand because it's so cheap to buy food out. Um, so <laughs> it's like. Uh, but you know, I try to for health purposes, and um, and, and and you know what, you gotta you gotta enjoy life. Course. Like yes. getting getting back to that too is is sure on the road. I, I try to eat healthy. Uh, I'll tell you another thing that I, I love. I love beer. I love it. You know, mm -hmm. and when I'm touring Germany or Czech Republic or uh, Holland or Belgium, wherever. I'm going to go to little holes in the wall just because it's fun right. and try their beer that you can't buy in a store because mm. I drink beer not to get drunk. I'm not that guy. You know, I drink beer because I genuinely love the taste of it and I like trying different beers. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like my Starbucks mugs. You know, it's like right. I, I travel around the world. I got over 60 of them, which my wife loves, takes up all the cupboard space. Yeah. Um, but... You know, it's 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 kind of like that. It's like I like to find these little pubs yeah. and go in there and try a beer that I know I can't get in a liquor store and see what it tastes like. And you know what? All I need is one. Right. You know, if it tastes damn good, yeah, I'm going to have two, you know, but <laughs> it, it, it all depends where I'm at. But don't be scared of, of living, too, you know, and right. it's like I, I know you're not. I know I'm not. And so when I'm on the road and there's a bag of Doritos, dude, I'm, I, I don't want to be be fake here. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll eat the Doritos like, I, once in a while. Sure, I'll, put, I'll eat the Doritos and I'll eat my salad. Like, there's no. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, it's like that. That's how I approach eating and everything. And and even on the road, it's like, man, 
don't worry about it. If you are consistently putting great things in your body, it is definitely okay to, to have the beer, to have the sure the Doritos, to have the chocolate bars once in a while. In moderation is the key word, moderation. You know, it's all right, guys. You know, just stay on top of, you know, the main food that you're putting in, in your body. Stay on top of it and make sure it's the good stuff, you know. And the, the beautiful thing about healthy food is there are endless options. There are so many options, you know, and sure, there's going to be things like I'm not a black olive guy. Mm. Can't stand the taste. I don't like olives at all, mm. you know, but on the flip side, it's like I, I like asparagus or, you know, it's like I like, uh, I don't know, there's so many different things. What's something people, I don't know, maybe not everyone likes cauliflower. Like I love cauliflower, you know, yeah. it's like. I eat my carrots. One of my snacks, favorite snacks are snap peas. Mm. You know, I'll just grab a handful of snap peas and it's healthy. It's not going to do anything bad for your body. It's a healthy snack and it tastes great. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's lots of options. You'd be very surprised at what you can find. Yeah. You know, I think, I think just, people get tricked often though if you're trying to, you know, people who are on, you know, who grew up maybe not eating the healthiest food, whose parents fed them like um you know craft dinner yeah the, yeah exactly and potato chips as their vegetable right so it's like um or pizza oh yeah <laughs> that's there's vegetables on it it's healthy you yeah know? <laughs> and you know what i love mm -hmm. pizza you yeah. know so yeah, oh, yeah it's it's all right you know i have it once in a while but sure. I, I get it yeah. It's it's funny in the first episode, uh, Neil Morris was talking about how like you know there's that's his weakness. Like he'll eat pretty healthy, but like there's that after show pizza that the band orders, and it's just like he, yeah. he'll 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 tell himself like okay, like he'll he'll if he has like more than a slice, then he'll like just only eat the cheese and stuff off of it, and not eat the crust. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. After every DTP show, there was pizza, you know. And you know what? I, I just burned probably twelve hundred calories and whatnot. Oh yeah, no, and, dude. Like you're in and, such an athletic position there, so it's like yeah. So it's like to to have a slice or two of pizza, and there are nights where I didn't even touch it. You know, I, I go and I, I have something else. Like I had leftover dinner, and I know it's healthy and it tastes great. I'm gonna have that instead of the pizza. Mm. You know, so I saved it and I'll eat that, which is what happened a lot of times. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know what, man? Again, moderation. Yeah, it's all good. it's all good. I think, uh, you know, healthy habits and healthy lifestyle and things like that, they kind of snowball and you gain momentum. You know, you, yep. you, you correct one area of your health or of your lifestyle, it tends to influence others. And there's like a tipping point, you know, to where yep. um, you are, you know, you're not as weak, like like you had the choice of pizza and you chose something else, you know. Yep. Um, and, and then when you do, you... You, you can't blame yourself for it. You know, you just like, okay, I, I, I lived. That's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. if people beat themselves up and then try to be strict to some arbitrary uh, diet or whatnot. Um, and I've been there. So I, <laughs> I, I totally get it. Um, but I think, um, and, and this is just a mindset thing, uh, which I really picked up a lot from meditation and the like, um, having the self-forgiveness and yep. you know just being yeah just having enough love for yourself to just accept that you did what you did and then you move on from where you are yes because you know, people tend yeah. to just fall off and then just be like well everything's ruined now and then just just go <laughs> just completely jump off the wagon and that's and that's how it always happens or, sure. or people are looking for that excuse mm. so you know subconsciously they're looking for that excuse so then they can eat all the the junk food and blah 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 well you know i fell off the wagon I might as well just go another week like this the week turns into two weeks two weeks turns into months you know right. yeah. next thing you know it's like where'd this extra 20 pounds come from you right. know it's like so yeah it, again you know like i keep on saying is moderation right it's, yeah. it's good that's what keeps you from doing that. And that's what I tell lots of people are, if you are just focused on healthy, 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 and all you're doing is eating healthy and you're getting sick of it because you never get to have the pizza, you never get to have that ice cream cone, you never get to have the chocolate bar or, or beer or wine or whatever. You know, it's like you, you, you have a greater chance of falling off the wagon right. by doing that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself, sure. you know? And, and when you do get to those days where you're going to have it, 
which has happened to me. I've had the pizza or whatever, and there have been times where definitely I love it, but there's been times where I've had it, I'm like, ugh. Right. It's not into it. I was like, I thought it would be. Yeah. Then there's other days where I'm like, oh, I can't get enough of this. Yeah. You it's know, awesome, you know? Yeah. And Tim Ferriss actually uh, speaks about um, this way of cheating, which is like a required thing in the in, in his diet book that he talks about. Uh, I think it's uh, Four Hour Body. Um, and he says, okay, whenever you have a craving for something, write it down, have a no file on your phone and say, okay, whatever day, Saturday, Saturday, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just write it down and eat that food on that day. Just like go hard and just eat all those foods on that day. But he also gives a like, good damage control tactics. And I think that's an important thing to kind of uh, think about um, that. Like how can you have your cake and eat it too? Yeah. Uh, and so you go out on stage and you're, you're drumming for hours, you know, and that, that burns a lot of calories. Um, and so that kind of gives you leeway. And so yeah. fitness is a good counterbalance. And I feel like we, any, any habits that we have that are, you know, that kind of take away from our health, that we, we should uh, be able to have something to counteract that. Yeah. And that's, that's where they go hand in hand. That's where you can really, you know, dive into the whole exercise portion of health Yes, is yeah, man, you, you know, I'll never forget. I used to be close to 50 pounds overweight mm. and it was one of the roughest times of my life, that, but I was still positive and there's still great things happening in my life. But, uh, I remember I was about to get married in 2009 Mm -hmm. uh, and it was May 14th that we were gonna that we got married and uh, I remember December of 2008 I'm like I don't want to look like this on my wedding day I don't want uh, my wife to see me like this on my wedding day when I look back at my pictures I want to be you know looking back going okay yeah that's that's who I am and I, I don't want to be this false representation of who I was because I just let things fall off because of my back accident which you know I could have stayed on a good diet but even even myself, I let it go, right. you know, and and so anyways, I went to the doctor and, you know, briefly, I tried the Atkins diet, you know, I'm ashamed to admit it. It's like nothing wrong with the people who do it, but for me, it just it does not work. You know, it didn't work. I gained everything back, you know, mm -hmm. and fad diets, I'm not a fan of it. Mm -hmm. And this is why I went to my doctor and I said, I want to lose this weight and I want to look good you know, for my wedding. What's your advice on diet? You know, I, I know I had eaten healthy before when I was younger, but when you're younger, metabolism's higher, you can burn stuff off a lot quicker. I was going to the gym, I was in, always in killer shape. It was just these few years after my back accident that, you know, weight and then got rid of it. My doctor gave me the best advice ever, and this is the advice personally that I give to everyone because I know it works 110%. Calories in versus calories out. Yeah. End of story. That's all that it is. And that's where exercise does come into play sure. when you add it with the diet that you have. Mm -hmm. And the, the bottom line is I followed that rule. Dude, I melted off 47 pounds in four and a half months. Wow. By just eating clean, getting my exercise in. And when your body's not used to that, mm -hmm. it just melts off, especially the first couple months. I think I melted off like 25, almost 30 pounds, like the majority of it. Wow. It was those last months that were really stingy. You know, even getting the last five pounds can take a month. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like whatever. But the bottom line is I followed that. I combined it with uh, my exercise mm -hmm. and all that. I got back in the gym because my, my doctor said I was allowed to work out again. For years, I couldn't because I lifted 10-pound weight and put my back out. Wow. Like it was bad, yeah. So once so I was where it caused that, I it was a construction accident. I was I was mm. doing stucco, and I was climbing a forty foot ladder, and I had about sixty seventy pound bucket of mud in my ha hand, and right hand, and I was climbing up the ladder, you know, mm. using my left hand. When I got to the top of the scaffold, the opening was on the left side. Dumbass move on my part. It wasn't on the right side, oh. so I could just lift it up. So instead of going down the ladder and switching hands to the left hand, you know, I'm like, oh, I've done this before where you get a swing going with the bucket oh, and then boy. you 
you heave it up and over. Well, I did that, and because it was such a heavy uh, amount of mud, you know, the bucket was so heavy. Right. Uh, I didn't even get it halfway, and I heard a pop in my back. Oh, no. And oh. I was like, what? And, you know, the bucket dropped. There's no one below because that would have killed someone. Uh, you know, the bucket exploded all over the brand new windows of the building and people's uh, cars. It was a nightmare, man. Uh, and I grabbed the ladder. I didn't feel anything at first. And I tried to step down. To this day, the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my life. Uh, Just brutal. Took me two, three minutes to get down that ladder. And uh, no one can help you. All they can do is stabilize the ladder for you at the bottom. No right. one can climb up and grab you. Right. I it took forever something that should take 10 seconds took two three minutes because it hurt that much wow and yeah that was the accident and when i went to the doctor they showed me the x-ray it's like i physically had moved vertebrae you know just it, it was like it was brutal man wow. it's like i couldn't believe it you know and i was bedridden for like three weeks after that mm -hmm. and uh anyways you know no excuses you know i just yeah. like oh i'll just have the pizza tonight you know and for a <laughs> Wow, I actually, I actually maintained my weight and my health, but uh, it just slowly kind of uh, deteriorated and yeah, my diet went yeah. down. The, you it's know, the, little, so. the little choices that just kind of drift you slowly into the abyss, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you, you got to be careful of that, man. And, and so lesson learned, you know, ever since I got rid of all the weight, I've uh, I've kept it off and I've always been in great health, That's you know, good. and um, it was just that period of my life where I went through a bump in the road where, you know, I was overweight and uh, I felt it, man. Day to day life. It, it was a tough going. Yeah, I hear that. And, and so like um, what, what's your training look like now? Training five days a week. Um, and basically, this is what I do. I break it up. I go chest on Monday, I do legs on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday is arms, Thursday is back, and then uh, I do shoulders on mm -hmm. um, Friday, take weekends off. Um, mm -hmm. For cardio, I do cardio, but I also drum a lot, so I'm really careful yeah. with it. So what I do is I do um, hit cardio. Okay. Do that three times a week. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it it's, uh, you know, I think you, you know this, a lot of people know this, but for the people who don't, if you just do stationary cardio where you're just doing the same speed all the time, that can eat away at your muscle oh, yeah. that you work so hard to build, right? Hit cardio doesn't do that. You know, if anything, it helps you in building it. And it's such short bursts. And for those of you that don't know what, it, it's H-I-I-T cardio. Um, mm -hmm. um, when you do that, it's interval cardio. Right. So I'll, I'll bike, I'll warm up for about six minutes or so. And then I'll, for 30 seconds, if I'm at level eight on, on a recumbent bike, I do it on a bike. Um, I'll crank it up to 20 mm -hmm. and I'll go as fast as I can for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then I recover for a minute and a half. Bam. Do that. I do about 12 reps of that. Cool. And, uh, you know, it ends up being about a 30 minute workout, 35 minute workout with cool down, always cool down, always stretch. You know, do all that stuff. Sure. And man, does it ever help with my drumming, my stamina? You know, we go play three hour shows with DTP in the past. It's like, yeah, it's going another three hours. You know, we do sound check and Devin would make a sound check the whole set for three hours. Now, if you're a guitar player, you can sit down, you know, you don't have to right. run around the show. There's no fake in that shit with drums, man. No. <laughs> you know, I literally play like how I play if I were to play live. You sound you know? check the so, whole show? Yeah, he wow. did that. He did that not for the last one we did, but the Retinal Circus Royal Opera Hall. We did three hour sound checks, wow. you know, because he just wanted to make sure everything was cool. And we get a two hour break, and then we're on stage doing it for real in front of cameras. My God, you know, and that's that's why we did such long sound checks for the, those shows. Uh, the last one we did in Plovdiv, we did a live show with an orchestra at the end mm. of uh, 2017. And um, that one was like an hour or something, but you know, he, yeah, I think man, I, I even, that was over the. the I'm used to hours. like a one-two song sound check. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, no, we did a lot, and uh, but yeah, you know what? Um, hit cardio is big because mm. 
it's great for your heart. It's great for your cardiovascular system. It's great for maintaining muscle. Yes. Okay, you will not eat muscle by doing this. Right. And to be honest, I do legs once a week, but when I started doing hit cardio, my legs got way bigger because mm-hmm. of all the extra. Oh yeah crazy uh restraint on your legs from when you crank up the the resistance right right and it was insane but yeah my legs are like awesome shape right and um yeah so that's that's what my training looks like it is sure. and you know what when i train um to get a little deeper into it 30 maximum 40 minute workouts okay okay right and what it is uh, i'll do pyramids and sometimes mm-hmm. i do drop sets but i'm just lower reps so like you know get 10 out maybe sometimes 12 but i'm pushing it with heavier weight mm-hmm. and and just uh building the strength one i'm not i'm not trying to get big but that actually creates lean muscle sure. you know it depends how much you eat after too right yeah, are definitely. you loading up and and going on a surplus of your calories or are you just maintaining those calories sure. so you can build your, your what lean do you muscle? use to count calories if you if you're counting you know what? Um, oh, what was there was a site back in the day called Calorie Count. Okay. And and I would go there. Now it's not the most efficient. And people who are like super scientific, they all have their scales. Yeah. And um, they'll actually weigh food and stuff. Yeah. You know about my famous pal? Do... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I use now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great one. Uh, mm-hmm. That's I started useful. with calorie count and then my fitness pal is the one. And yeah, you, you just put it in there. You build your library and mm-hmm. then it's like, oh yeah, I had this amount of snap piece saved. You add it. it takes two seconds. Yeah. It takes no time at all. No, yeah. And then next thing you know, you, it's like, okay, it's for me to maintain my my healthy weight. I'm like uh, almost 2,700 calories mm-hmm. or something like that. you know. And, and uh, so it's like, that, that's a lot. Dude, that's a lot. If you're eating lots of vegetables and fruit and all that, you have to eat a lot of food yeah. to, to maintain that for the diet that I use, right? So sure. I'm never starving, man, ever. You know, it's that. like it's like a, it's always a healthy weight, and, and I feel feel great, right? But uh, so you know, combine that and counting my my, my calories and whatnot, and uh, adding in a healthy diet, getting this awesome regimen in with uh working out which mm-hmm. doesn't take much time out of my day an yeah. hour yeah you, you briefly and, mentioned uh go ahead no no go ahead yeah you briefly mentioned that um you also participate in some like sport activity yeah 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 like i love playing tennis i love playing hockey uh you know one of one of my good friends he's like five yeah five time world champion in jiu-jitsu and mm. he showed me stuff i love MMA, I love UFC, you know, and uh, it kind of went downhill a little bit the past few years, but it seems to be getting a little bit better. But I just love uh, physical activity, you know. It's like tennis is one of my favorite sports to play. I'm a huge hockey fan, probably because nice. I'm Canadian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I grew up on on hockey, and you know, it's like I just I, I like sports, and uh, I don't know. I I, I know it's a uh, a good way to get some exercise and it's fun yeah, you know so definitely. i try and get out there and, and do sports whenever i can i love going hiking you know with my wife and and doing stuff like that we're always walking our dogs so being active you know it's a, i just feel good and i love being outside i love i love nature i grew up on vancouver island there was tons of nature around so we'd always go through the bushes and stuff i love the smell mm. and just everything right so being active has always been a big part of my life do you how, do you have any activities on uh, when you're touring or in the past when you've toured uh, that like are a bit sporty be, beyond the um, beyond the show itself? Do you, do you go out to nature or anything like that? Yeah, like I, I'm a big fan. I'm one of those touring guys who who would be up early on the bus and I'm out roaming around checking out the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I invest in a beautiful Canon camera uh, camera and uh, DSLR. I love photography. My dad's a semi-professional uh, photographer, so I learned a lot from him. So I go out, just hike everywhere, grab beautiful pictures of the cities. And now it's like I don't know how many times I come back to my computer, open up you know my hard drive, and go, 
Yeah, so where did I go in 2013 again? Out of curiosity. And you open up all these pictures, like, I remember that. So yeah. not only were you being active, not only were you going out and experiencing amazing things, you can come back and relive those moments now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm like so grateful that I have all these pictures and I, I took the time to do all that. And it was good for my health. I was out walking around, getting healthy, you know, and staying healthy. Sure. And, uh, Man, it's it's amazing how this all comes in to one thing, which is the life that you live. Sure. You know? And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. But, you know, that would be the most of it on the road. It's like I, I never really did sports or anything. I didn't really have time. Um, and I'm always looking for a gym. You know, it's like I'd always try and get my workouts in and on the road. There are other times where I just bring bands. Sure. I do the, the, and, and do that because I can do that in the venue and I didn't have to go you know, searching for a gym because sometimes you're playing in the middle of nowhere and you can do that. So eventually I caught on. I'm like, what can I do for band exercises? And, you know, I, I started adopting that on the road as well. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I, I, I do as well. You know, I, I, I have uh, bands with me. Um, a few things health-wise that I bring with me, just like um, a few bands and uh, green powder. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. The, the singer in a monolith, uh, John, John uh-huh. Howard. He's big on the green powder. Mm-hmm. He's he's vegetarian, mm-hmm. but uh, he, he just takes it because of the, the benefits of course. from it. So, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and I, you know what? I, I'll admit I don't take that daily, but um, it's great stuff, and I have taken it on and off, and it's, sure. it's awesome. Highly I, recommend it. When when you're at home, you know you have all the nutrition available. Um, but not on the road, though. Not on the road, right. I mean, like, I, it's funny. I have, like, a tour recap video on uh, my band, uh, Infinite Spectrum. We did a, a tour with Fate's Warning. And, yeah. and we were on the, out on the road, and we had, um, we had the green powder, and we, w- we would literally stop at rest stops to blend it. And yeah. it, it's, you know, you, you do what you got to do. And I, I had my band drink that. That was, like, my, you know, like, you're, you're drinking this. We're not getting sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. You you do whatever you can, and that's the other thing too. You brought up a great point: is if you're on top of your diet, you're on top of your exercise and all that. It's funny how you don't get as sick as as most other people around you. Mm-hmm. I've been on tours, eating awesome, healthy, and <clears throat> and I mentioned I've been on tours, not every tour, okay? Because sometimes you just you get it. You're on a bus, you know, yeah. circular air. But I've been on buses where. Pretty much everyone in the band goes through the cold, and I never got it. Right. You know. Yeah. Now, what do I attribute that to? I I personally think it's because I, I take care of myself. I eat healthy, and exercising. Yeah, I think. Yeah, even, I wash my hands all the time too, but you know, sure. still. I think it's important to. Uh, it can't be understated how taking care of yourself at home is important, and then when you go out of the road, you've built like a solid foundation, f- both physically. Well. Uh, on the exterior and on the interior, your immune system is probably firing well, and uh, yep. and so you know if you're uh, you know exposed to the elements, uh, whatever they may be, you, you're a lot better prepared for that. Um, like I was just in uh, in Thailand, and my my girlfriend there had um, like bronchitis. It was you know it was, it was bad, um, and her her doctor was like, "You have an awesome immune system." <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's like you've been with her and she was very infectious and you you know it didn't affect you yeah yeah that goes to show it and you know my wife uh she she went to school to be a personal trainer the whole bit she's extremely healthy as well and eats super healthy. she's actually celiac so she has a gluten allergy mm. um so right away in a sense she's almost forced to eat healthy you know what i mean and yeah. and uh, She's she's lactose intolerant too. Mm. You know, lots of people are like, "Oh my god, her life must be horrible." It's like she eats amazing, and and you know, it actually made her go out and find some recipes that I'm like, I would rather have this amazing recipe that she has for food and as a snack than going out and buying a, a bag of chips. Like it's amazing what you can do, but yeah. that's a whole other topic. But the bottom line is, we're almost never sick. That's awesome. You know, it's like. We're always healthy. And if one of us does get a cold or something like that, there have been more times than not that the other doesn't get it. Right. You know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Of course, we're, we're not kissing each other all the time. And stuff. we'll be like, yeah, we'll hold off on that for a few days, you know, before <laughs> the, just, here it goes. Over. But 
but in the same breath, you're sharing the same place that you live in. Sure. And there's germs everywhere, right? But yeah, it's pretty pretty incredible what you know. You have a healthy immune system. You take care of yourself. You exercise. You have a killer diet. You're drinking tons of water. You know, like I take vitamin C every day and little thing, right? Little things like that. I don't take like a a, a daily uh, health pill or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. I don't need to. I get it all, all out of my food, sure. you know. Yeah. And you could say the same same thing about vitamin C, but it's I don't know. I think Maybe C is it. a good thing to have a little extra. I agree. That's yeah. and that's why I do it. You yeah. know. So, but uh, yeah, you know, it's it's really important to have a great diet, be active, mm -hmm. someone in your life. That doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym, you know. But get out there, walk. Get out there, go for the hike. You know, maybe maybe don't take the car if it's a fifteen minute walk. Just walk it. You know. Yeah. So l let me let me ask you uh, more on the mental health side of things. Sure. Um, now, have you ever struggled with uh, some depression or anything like that? I have not. Um, I've had family members that have, mm -hmm. and you know, the one thing I'm very cautious of, uh, especially with my you know, RVP health, body and mind site mm -hmm. is I've never been through depression and there's various types of depression you can go through, especially after talking to family members that have been through it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very cautious about how I, how I comment on that. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is the mind is a very powerful thing and um, you can turn things around. And I've, I've been in stages where I've been extremely sad or yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, we all have depressing times, not necessarily depression, but you go through depressing times in life, maybe financially things are really rough or you're, you're down in the pits for something for a couple months or, or whatever. And I've always just found that if I focused, I, I recognize it. I don't ignore the bad. I yeah. reckon the first thing I do is recognize it. But the second thing I do is, I look for the positive. I'm like, how can I make this better? What mm -hmm. can improve this? How? What can I do today to make it just a little bit better? I know mm -hmm. it's not going to improve it all and, and take care of everything in a day, but what can I do to be better? So when, when I've gone through times like that, I'm always looking for a better way. You know what I mean? And that's, I don't know, it just seems so obvious to me, but it isn't. Right. For, for a lot of people and again i for the people who have gone through depression i don't understand because i've never been through it sure. so i'm not going to say it's as easy as that to do that i think you pointed out something important there very quickly just keep that in thought but i have spoken to people who have gone through it in my family mm -hmm. and when i've suggested those things to them and they started doing it they have gone out of depression and they dealt with it their own way. They did their own steps, but they did make that. It did make that difference. Mm -hmm. So uh, go ahead. You're yeah, gonna say. I, I was saying that you know the I, it can't be understated that the fact that making small steps, um, yes. just like little successes, and build those up, because when you're down in the pits, um, you just need to. Um, you know, you, you need small little bits of progress, right? And and not you, some problems are bigger than you can chew in one day, and yep. and and having just some kind of little measurable progress. I uh, I think it was Jordan Peterson who said that it's just uh, you need to compress your timetable, right? Yes. So it's like you know if, if something is just so if you're such an in in, in such a chaotic uh, situation, then you need to think smaller, like don't think uh, like a week ahead or even a day ahead, just like what are you doing in the next hour? You know, just like little by little, little by little, you can climb out of the, the pit. You know, I love I love the quote, uh, big stars are little stars that keep shooting. Mm. That sums it, sums it up. Yeah. You know, I've, I always remember that when I read that quote 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Never forgot that because that's exactly what it is. If, if, if you think about it, what's the thing I said earlier in this podcast? You need to break things down. Mm -hmm. For example, I go to teach a, a, a brand new student. They've never drummed before. And I go to teach them an eighth note drum beat. Okay, they, They've never played a beat. They, they're looking to do it. The first thing I'll do is I'll play the eighth note drum beat. Kick, snare, you know, eighth notes on the hi-hat. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then 
on purpose, I'll look at them, I'll go, go, play that for me. Hmm. And they'll they'll try every time, but it sounds nothing close. They're messing up, their tempo's all over, and they're instantly frustrated. I'm like, okay, now do this for me. I want you to play eighth notes, so just one and two and three and four and. And then on one, I want you to add a kick drum. Kick and two and three and four and kick and two and. Then on three, I want you to add another kick drum. So kick and two and kick and four. Okay. Yeah. You see where I'm getting. Okay. Yeah. And I add the snare on two. Right. And then we the add snare another on snare on four. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, they're playing this eighth note beat to a 60 BPM click track on time. Sure, it may take 15, 20 minutes. They look up at me and their eyes are like saucer fans, okay? And they're just like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, you know? And they're every time I get the exact same result. Right. They're playing their first drum beat, whereas maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes earlier, they weren't even remotely close. And they're right. thinking, man, this is going to take weeks, you right. know? And that's usually the mindset. But the bottom line is, what did we do? We broke everything down into small steps. Mm -hmm. And then we build upon those steps to get to your end result, right. okay? And the bottom line, I have, the bottom line with this whole exercise is to show that you need to set goals, Right. okay? Now, what's step number three in um, my nine steps? It's set goals. I came up with something, okay, just to go even further on this topic that we're talking about, and I wanna share this with everyone because I think this will be one of the biggest things people could take away from this podcast because it's something I designed and it works. And I, I get the most emails about this. It's called the four fives. My blog is actually called the four fives, but that's uh, influence from this, okay? And how it works is you set goals for every five days, because it's a given you set goals daily, but you set goals for every five days, for goals that you set for every five weeks, for goals that you set for every five months, for your five-year plan, okay? Mm -hmm. And I started doing this. And what, did, what am I doing? I'm breaking everything down. When you think about it, now that you know how the four fives works, when you think about it, everyone has that five-year plan. We all hear it. Big businesses, what's your five-year plan? What are you going to do? Everyone comes up with the five-year plan, and then they just go. Lots of people give up on their five-year plan. Why? Because it seems so goddamn daunting, man. It's so daunting. They're just like, I have no direction. I have no idea how I'm going to get there. And that's where their biggest mistake lies. Well, why don't you look at that five-year plan? You don't know how you're going to get there or how you're going to do it. But you need to start achieving small goals to get to that five-year plan. And that's how I came up with the four fives. Is like, how can I do this? So I'm being held accountable for every step of the way to my five-year plan. And so that's how I, I came up with it. I'm like, well, be accountable every week then. Okay, well, every five days, I'm going to be accountable for something. And then what's my five-week goal towards this five-year goal? Well, my first five-week goal will be this. And once I achieve that, I'll create another one. Mm. Okay, so you keep on achieving these five-day goals and five-week goals. Next thing you know, you hit five months. What, what's your five-month goal going to be then that you can work towards with these five-day and five-week goals? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be this. And then do the math. Five months, you know, into five years. How many months are there in the years? It's 60, right? Mm -hmm. It all works out perfectly. But mm -hmm. the main thing is you are being held accountable the whole way. You're, you are continually succeeding. And sometimes it may take longer than five days. Sometimes it may take longer than five months or five weeks. But you know what? There's been some goals of mine that I've set for five years that I've achieved in three. Yeah. Uh, there's been some goals that I've set for five years. Okay. Um, I'm not saying it's a guaranteed thing, but it's kept me on track. And most of all, I haven't quit. Right. And that's that's the biggest thing. I'm on track. I'm yeah. still doing it. And the one thing I will tell you, if mm -hmm. you do this, you have a greater chance of succeeding. Mm. And you will see so many small successes along the way. What's that do? Build your confidence. You believe in yourself more. Sure. You work harder. 
because you know the results you're getting. Of course. It's infectious, man. Yeah. It, it just, it's something that you can roll with. Mm-hmm. And I, I want everyone who hears this podcast, try it. It's in my free book. You know, I break it down, try mm-hmm. it. I get written to the most about that topic more than anything that I teach at my seminars. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll put that in the uh, show notes for sure, uh, The a link to the book. Mm-hmm. So that... Yeah, no, that that's so important. Um, that you know, you have these big goals, you break them down into smaller goals, and then you have measurement of like you know the measurement of your progress. You know, we need measurable goals. That's it. Yeah, it's it's no different than going to the gym. What yeah. are your gains? You know, what what were you at last week? Sure. It's no different than when I'm teaching drum students. Mm-hmm. All of my drum students have a logbook that I make them get from their first lesson. When we come back, I'm like, okay, so you're at 75 BPM on stick control last week. What are you at this week? Right. And if they said 75 BPM, I'm go, what did you do last week? Well, what are you talking about 75 BPM? Right. You know, so you didn't drum. Right. You know, but they come back and it sets this mindset in these little five to ten to fifteen year old kids, right? Mm-hmm. And you should see how awesome of drummers they, they become in such a short period of time because they know that logbook is there. They know that when they come back for the lesson next week, RVP is going to be all over them knowing that 75 isn't good enough. It better be, you know, at least 80 BPM or 85 BPM or something. Sure, you sure. know what I mean? Yeah. And the results that I see in all my students are phenomenal, man. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. And I think it's important to note that even small progress just – progress right just having right. i just you're, you're stepping forward you know if i seen 76 even it's it's not amazing but it's just like okay you know well, let's try it's to push something. on yeah it's something right it's like you you're you the trajectory is what's yes. important you know that it, that it's upward um and and again the self-forgiveness then if if it you know if they fell off or or, or whatnot it's like um not to sabotage oneself because you didn't follow through with what you know what you're gonna do self-forgiveness is huge it's like we're gonna have days where we're not gonna be doing you know i don't know how many students at the end of the school year come back it's like ryan i'm still at 75 you know but but i had tests all week that i for and you know i want to get to the next way i'm like perfect no problem at all whatsoever Don't don't beat yourself up on that. It's all right. You're doing the right thing. I think education is extremely important. This is your hobby on the side. You're learning to do to do drums. I fully understand that. That's all right. You know, it's like move ahead. You know, it's yeah. like it, it, it makes sense. You know, if if they do that all throughout the summer when they're not even going to school, well then we'll have a little bit different of a conversation. You know, but um, I get it. You know, and and self forgiveness. You've mentioned that a couple times in in this uh, podcast, and it's, it's a very important thing. It's yeah. extremely important. You cannot beat yourself up over life. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah. How are you going to evolve with life? How are you going to, you know, go through the intangibles of life? Right. You have to deal with them as they come, and you know, some, mm-hmm. sometimes it's not always going to be perfect. Sometimes you're not going to get past seventy five. You know, that's all right. Self-forgiveness is important. Yeah. And then with the self-forgiveness, I feel like it's just a more efficient strategy. Um, if you're thinking from just a purely like um, pr- productivity output point of view, it's just like if you're beating yourself up, that's time or energy that you could have allocated to just getting right back on and continuing. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, that that's something I got from meditation because at first it was just like, and this happens to a lot of people, you know, who claim that, oh, I can't meditate and this, that, and the other thing. It's just like they, they sit down and then they, they don't get the desired result or they they realize their mind has been racing and then they beat themselves up over it. And they're, it's rather than just coming back to being present, they now they're like, you know, working backward and, and, and blaming themselves for not doing the thing that they said they're going to do. It's just that's not productive, right? It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, just get right back on. Like, you know, accept that the mind wanders, accept that the person wanders on the goal or, you know, whatever whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Accept that if you had, you know, missed a day on your diet or more than a day, wherever you're at or a month, 
just get right back on, eat healthy, yep. do your thing, and just it, it's it's all about the returning of to the breath in meditation, yeah. and I think that's a it microcosm is. for life. Um, on that topic, on on productivity, like what do you, do you have a way that you manage your time in particular? Um, you know what, my iPhone, uh, mm-hmm. I got this iPhone 10. I love that phone. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, but the notes section and the calendar section just gets beat up it's like (laughs) that's the most visited sections on my phone you know and uh i'm always taking notes to-do list every single day um and then calendar if there's an appointment it's put in like when i was driving this morning it's like the the reminder came up i'm like oh rush hour sucks you know it's like damn i'm gonna be late you know but i'm driving so it's like i I couldn't uh skype text you or anything right but there's there's an example though that if the reminder came up in my phone Mm. you know and once you see that it, it keeps you on track it keeps you productive you don't lose where you are you know what i mean so my phone's going off every single day man you know with doing a monolith stuff and then I, I got my teaching schedules and dealing with stuff with the band. There's just everything, right? But the the beautiful thing is it's controlled chaos. Right. You know, and that's the beautiful thing about it is I know that I'm going to be here doing this at this time. I know I'm going to be doing this. So guess what? I can work out between 2 and 3 p.m. today. Perfect. You know what? I have my whole night open now because I did all the stuff that I had to get done today. Wife and I can go out for dinner, walk our dogs, go for a hike, do whatever we want. And you know what? That that can, like I said, it's controlled chaos sure. at, at this point. You know, because I got a lot going on in my life. Then, you know, when I leave for uh, Mexico to to go on her ten year wedding anniversary in just under two weeks, wow. you know what? There is nothing in my phone. It, you know what I put in my phone for ten days? It's lost cabos, relax and enjoy. Yeah, I, I just I did exactly this, what I'm gonna do. That's awesome. I did the same exact thing because um, I normally when I, I I travel to see my girlfriend, she uh, or actually now fiance, I'll get into that. <laughs> congrats, congrats. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So uh, the thing that I do, well, I, I I usually teach out there, right? Uh, because she's working as well, nice. but like there was a week where you know we had a trip, and I I committed to being fully available on every level. And and I moved everything and didn't take my even take my guitar with me. Um, just completely left myself completely free to you know to enjoy the, the time together and uh, yep. you know to make the most of it and really live. You know, I, I think people really struggle, especially hyper productive people, to struggle to take a break. And, yeah, and, and and it's so rejuvenating. You know, so yep. it's it, it's it's super important to rest. And uh, on the micro level, like sleeping every day uh, well and, and also on the macro, just taking a, a trip and, you know, enjoying it with your loved ones. And very important stuff. Oh, it's crucial. Yeah. It, it's, we, we make sure every year that we go away, if not a couple of times. And we always go to somewhere that brings us a lot of joy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you're refreshed. You get back. You're ready to take on the world. You know what I mean? So, and, and the, the key ingredient when i go away is just hey man you know they, they have a gym at the place that we go to in, in cabo and it's beautiful i get my workouts in because i, I do them because i want to it's like yeah. if my day doesn't feel complete if i don't it takes an hour out of my day my wife does the same thing you know but then we go out and we drink we eat we still eat healthy but you know what yeah we're gonna we're gonna indulge in some desserts here and there when sure. we want right uh, but am I going to drink beer every day? Damn straight, man. I'm in Mexico. It's like, yeah, I want my Dissecchis or a Corona here, or maybe I'll have a gin and tonic. It's like, whatever. I'm going to yeah. enjoy it, you know, and make the most of it. So it's crucial, you know, and I, I think it doesn't need to be in the format of a vacation. It could be a one day trip. It could be a weekend getaway. But those are, are very, very important to have in your life so you can reset and, and be even more efficient with what you want to get done, you know, in the working side of your life. Don't ever forget to take those breaks consistently. They do not need to be in the form of vacation. Vacation is the ultimate way of, of doing it every year. But there's no reason every month you shouldn't have 
a few days to reset, yeah. you know, to spend time with loved ones, to, to do things that you love around the area that you live in. You yeah. know what I mean? I, and there's so, so many benefits to doing that, even beyond just getting rest so you can be more productive. It's like you get to connect with your loved ones. Um, or you, you just, you know, you get to experience more things in your life, which will, you know, bringing that with you uh, will, you know, help you. Uh, especially yeah. like when you travel, um, traveling is an amazing thing. Um, I've recently been traveling extensively, like in the past few years. I love it. Yeah. And you gain so much insight um, from doing that, you know, like going, traveling around Asia was very interesting for me and I gained a lot of perspective. So, of course. Yeah. You know, it's the, the different cultures that, mm -hmm. that you see is so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, just the, the way that people live, the, the way they eat, you know, uh, the way they, they go about doing their everyday life. And then not only that, just nature is so radically different in the different parts of the world that you visit. And yeah. it just blows my mind, you know. It's like, you know, I could go from somewhere like Japan and then go to Los Cabos, Mexico, and they're radically different from oh, yeah. each other. And then you could go to New Zealand, and again, you're radical difference. Oh, yeah. Which is very similar to Vancouver in a way, to you know, British Columbia, Canada. So, I don't know, man. Traveling just, there's so much that comes with it that is so good for any individual who experiences it. And let's face the fact, you know what life is all about? Is it about money? Is it about health? and and all these different things health's very important yes and exercising man the bottom line life is about experiences that's right. you'll live the best life ever if you can load it up with incredible experiences because that in the end you know when you're 85 90 and you know you, you can't go on those crazy trips anymore or do that you can at least look back relax and just go man i lived a hell of a life yeah and that's that's what you should do is build your experiences get as many of them in there as you can take those calculated risks to push you to that point that's right where you, you can experience all these things and in the meantime be healthy right you know take care of yourself so you can do this till you are in your 70s no problem sure i, I think it's important. you know what i mean yeah. or, or worry right take yourself you know, live life to the fullest every single day and uh, experiences, build them, you know? Right, and and like, if when you look back, um, I think it was um, this uh, Marcus Aurelius, if, I, if, if I'm uh, saying his name right, might, might be messing that up, uh, he's a Stoic philosopher, and Stoicism in general, just like, they, they're very friend, they're very much friends with death. Right. And they look at the yes, yes. it's very common exercise to look at themselves in their deathbed and see what you know, to see what really matters in their life and yeah, yeah. and just to stay on a path of, of something that, that's meaningful. I think it's uh, um Gary V, you know Gary V? Of course. Yeah, yeah so Gary V is uh he mentioned like go and uh Go to a retirement home and speak to people there, and you're, the biggest thing you're gonna get is like regret. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. You know, it's you know if you do really do what you want to do, you know, do what's meaningful to you and not what uh, you think is gonna you know get you by. Um, you're gonna do it with so much more passion, and that's gonna get you by. You know, I feel I feel like that's exactly yeah. it. The, the phrase that I use all the time. Mm -hmm. And everyone should live by this. Absolutely everyone, because everyone's different. Do what you love and love what you do every single day. That's right. That's right. It doesn't matter how small. And my example is this. I love coffee. Mm -hmm. I love my Volkswagen GTI. I know it's not a Ferrari or whatever, but you know what? I love that car, man. It's fun to drive, and I've mm -hmm. always wanted one. Why? Well, I, I got one now. You know, fully loaded. Sunroof the whole bit. Man, the thing parks itself. It's fun to drive. You know what I mean? So what do I do? I'll get up in the morning. I'll jump in my GTI. I'll drive to Starbucks. I could have my coffee at home, and we usually do that a lot of the times, but sometimes I just want to do it. I grab coffee order from my wife and I. I take the long way home, drive in the car that I love, and I get home. You know what? That small little 15-minute venture is something I love doing. 
Yeah. And that's what I mean by do something that you love and love what you do every day is just that small little thing that I did just made my day that much better because it brought me joy. Mm-hmm. If you do a bunch of that, you see we're coming full circle here now, you know, to keep shooting. Um, if you do a lot of those things, working towards something great, man, you're going to live a, a very happy life and you're going to be doing exactly what you want. And the financial thing, which we didn't talk about a lot, which we don't really need to, but I'll, I'll guarantee you this. Sure. If you do what you love and you love what you do every day, you have the greatest chance of making the most money. Yeah. I promise yeah. you. Because yeah. the passion is there and you're going to work that much harder because you're loving what you're doing in your life. Right. And it's, you know, I, I, I briefly touch on that because, uh, like, I, I did want to ask you a, a thing or two on, on on that front as far as the financial stuff. So you manage uh, all of uh, um, iMonolith's uh, business stuff, right? Yep. So, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's myself and uh, we have a project manager. But, yeah, I'm, I'm in the band. I'm, I'm the guy for sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, you need that guy in the band. <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> very, very important to have the business headed uh, individual, um, you know, and, and how do you um, how do you guys handle your social media or you handle your social media personally? I'm, like, I'm doing that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I've, I've been pretty successful with my personal social media mm-hmm. and all the guys saw that and just said, hey, guys, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, I like to give it a shot and they're like, please do, <laughs> you know, they're like, yes. And so I've done it, you know, and, and it's, it's done well for us. Sure. You know, like all the, all the labels we talked to, all the different PR and radio companies we've spoken with, and they're all impressed with the following that we have considering we, had, we don't even have an album out. We mm-hmm. don't even have, we have one single out, you know, and we have all this interest and following and, and hype surrounding us, you know? So, uh, again, there's a monolith is is more of a democracy. There's a voting system which I like. Mm-hmm. That way, no one gets bitter or whatever, and we all trust each other, you know. So mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, uh, I'll say I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to do this, but we should delegate this to you. This should go to you, and and this way we can be a team and work how cohesively you, together. Sure. How, how does that system work exactly? Well, literally, it's a voting system. It's like I like this cover, you know, and everyone's like, I like this cover, this cover, this cover. They're like, cool. Uh, Three of us voted for that cover. Uh, That's going to be the cover of the album. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and and the other two, they they won't be sore losers about it because we'll basically get it to a point where it's like, hey, here's two or three covers that we all think are rad. But which one do you really like? You know, it, it always gets to that point. So if if your choice didn't get chosen then uh you know what uh not a big deal they're all awesome so we always again there's this really positive way of working things we're always looking for the best route to take and if it comes down to making a final decision whichever way we go there's positives with every single one right so you know that's that's me taking on the business end of it and and making sure that we always have those three positive options in the end that's interesting. You know, so, so you, you you provide just adequate like options, so you guys have something to choose from. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We're always like, you know, when when for example, like we are looking at the different artwork right now for the album covers, and mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened. We came down to the three choices, and all three were excellent. But let's vote. And the funny thing is, the one that we're going with, all five of us voted for it. Mm. you know awesome. and then the one that was kind of the runner up uh we said we'll use it somewhere else in the the booklet for sure yeah. you know and uh but yeah you know that that was just an example but all three of them were great and we even said you know it's like you get interchange them and, and you know i wouldn't be disappointed if my pick didn't get chosen because all three of them are great sure. we have a great set we're working with so we're we're very happy you know so you know it's it, it just comes down to that and then there's other things too where you have to be smart within your band you know it's like we hired on a producer to to do this record so there were some songs that you know i thought oh man that'd be cool to have on the album didn't make it there are other songs people thought oh that'd be cool to have and didn't make it 
but then the songs that we really felt strongly about, you know, they ended up making it. But the producer was there to make that final decision. And with all of that producer's experience, his know-how in the industry is very well known, very well respected. You feel confident with handing over that reign to someone who's very familiar with the industry mm. and making that choice for you, you know? So, you kind know, of like we, a mediator. Yeah, really, in the end, you know, but... uh it's it's also made things a lot easier because then you no know, with the songwriting end of things yeah it's a part of you and if you come up with a part or an overdub that you really like but the rest of the band doesn't you know that hey, I've seen it a million times before band members get bitter like oh I'm not involved. but if you hand everything in all your overdubs all your ideas to producer and producer says this this and this stuff didn't make it. Mm. It's done. You can't bitch. If, if you have a beef with someone, it's with the producer. Right. It's not with other members in your band. And you know what? It's worked out really well for us. All of us enjoyed it because all of us love the, the producer that we're working with and his work speaks for itself mm. of how successful he is. And uh, in the end, you know, we're listening to the, to the record. It's getting mixed now. It's like songs are the best they've ever been. Sure. I think, you yeah. know, with a lot of these creative decisions, it's like, you know, you contribute what you can, or what you you know what you want to contribute. But at the same time, it's like you're aware that it, this is a collective, and yeah. uh, you know you what will get used will get used, and what won't won't. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it'll be the combination of of its parts. Yeah, and okay. that's it. And you know what it is, and then it's still teamwork. Yes, everyone's still putting in. Everyone's still there. Again, I look at the positive of it. It's like. I don't look at, oh, that didn't get used or my idea didn't get used. It's like, yeah, what, what we ended up using made it a better song. So move forward with that. Let's learn the new song now, you know, and let's let's learn those parts that made it. And let's forget about the parts that didn't. And you know what? There's been times before where we've written songs, parts didn't get used, but they got used in other songs that made the record. Right. Okay, so don't throw it away. It's not that, oh, that didn't work. That's the biggest mistake that people make consistently in life, okay, is they fail and they don't take the time to see why they failed. They don't take the time to, to learn that there's a golden nugget in every single failure that has happened in life. You get to learn from it. That's what it is, you know. So if something happens that's negative in your life, maybe take a look, break it down, and find out why that happened. Right. Learn from it. And move on right you either win or you learn that's it that's a hundred percent right i love that one too yeah <laughs> and uh yeah so we've taken that approach with the band and it's mm -hmm. worked amazingly so far that's awesome so, it's a it's a great great feeling and the camaraderie is there it's like we're all pumped we all believe in it we all love it moving forward man you know it's a calculated risk and it's a big risk but I, I feel really good about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Lots of great things have already happened for us. Our single debuted on the NACC American charts, like wow. at number six, and it stayed at number six for three weeks in a row. Was in the charts for four or five weeks. We're independent, no label, no nothing, wow. and we achieved something like that already. That's you know, it's it's awesome. So I think a big part of that is you know your presence and engagement with your audience through social media, right? Uh, yeah. So what what's been your strategy for that? You know what, man? Treat these people who are supporting you, who are basically the only reason you'll be able to tour or do anything with your career. You need that support. Um, treat them like your friends. You know, talk to them. I don't know. You, you, you go to all these big bands out there and some even that aren't that big and they don't respond to their fans. Mm. You know, and I don't even like call them fans. I, I call them supporters. You know what I mean? It's like fan is such a lame word to me. Mm -hmm. But without their support, you know, you're nothing. Right. And so I like taking the time out yeah. and, and to answer their questions. I like showing them that we're real. You know, it's it's always funny when you get response like, holy shit, Ryan answered me. You know, it, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, you know, it's like whatever man we're both human beings is whatever i play music big deal you mm -hmm. ask me a question i'm gonna answer your question man sure. and we have that really cool relationship with our uh with the people who support us 
you know, and I think that makes all the difference because when we get out there on the road, we're all like that in the band, you know, it's like when I was out with DTP, I was one of the last guys to get on the tour bus because I'll sign everything, I'll take every picture, I'll answer every question, whatever I can humanly possibly do before a bus call happens, Right. you know, and it, it's just to give back. Sure. Because it's a two-way road, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's not about make albums, sell albums, uh, sell tours, sell merch, all that, and then just run to your bus. Oh, I've done my part by showing up in their city. I, I don't believe in that at all, man. Right. And you know, the people are just like, oh, VIPs are so invasive. It's like, grab a set of nuts, man. You know, you wouldn't be there if it wasn't for those people and, and all this stuff. And you know what? Even for VIPs, they're paying for the goddamn things. Right. It's like, stop bitching, man. Right. And it's like, <clears throat> granted, we need to do that now to survive, to, yeah. to actually have a career, you know. But at the same time, I will answer every question, take every picture and sign every whatever. To, to view the change in the music industry from a positive lens, I think we've grown our relationships with our audience so much more than was there when there was this huge um, system in between us and our fans. Yeah. You know, and, and now, you know, you're having these personal conversations with your audience. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. And and now I, and, I, and, and it's required of you at this point in order to grow. You know, there yep. is there isn't some, you know, giant conglomerate that can do as much as you can do just by having some conversations. And then you own your own brand at that point and you can offer things directly to your audience. That's um, exactly it. So what have you, um, like, in which ways have you kind of capitalized on that? Like, what, what have you, what kind of value, unique value do you offer, like, to your, um, to your following? Like, both with, with, with uh, I'm on it and also personally with your own brand. Like, what have you, like, you've done the whole um, RVP health, and bo health body and mind. Yeah. Um, but uh, do you, have you, like, done any kind of products or services? Um, at this point with a monolith, cause it's so fresh and new mm -hmm. and we're working so hard on the album and stuff. We haven't really done anything. Sure. We, we are planning some like contests and giveaways and stuff, you know, be closer to the album release and all that, mm -hmm. that we're going to do. But at this stage, it's funny you mentioned that. Cause I, I said that to the band, they said, we, we, we got to create value to the people who are supporting us right now. And they're like, well, what's the best way I said, because some of the guys weren't very uh, social media driven and it's just because it's just not their thing, right? Sure. But I said, you know what, even though you're not, the best value we can give them is recognizing them yeah. and, and is by speaking with them, mm. is by doing Facebook live feeds where we can answer, answer their questions right there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and the fact that their question gets answered a lot of the times people are like, this is awesome. You know, it's like, they're speaking to me through Facebook. This is sweet, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how how we can create value at this point. And I, I thought it was always important, and it wasn't from like a strategic build your business standpoint. It's just being real. Oh yeah, you know, it's it's just like, hey, thank you. Yeah. This is what we can offer you now. Is I'm going to go on there and and answer your questions because genuinely I'm I'm grateful that you're interested and supporting us. Yeah, I so, mean it's it's the extension of the VIP table or the uh, you know, the merch table. You know wherever you know you hang out and meet your fans. It's like you know it's just now you have them on on the internet and uh, you can you know engage with them in, in the same way and reach more people, uh, touch more people. You yeah. Know? And that's that's how I, I I view that. That's how the whole band views it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, you know, Byron, for example, or bass player, he's mm -hmm. not a huge social media guy. He's really busy and stuff, has a family and all that. But you know, he's reposting stuff and doing it. He never really did that much before, you know. And and he gets it. He contributes. He's doing his part. And you know, he 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 wants to to be part of it. And he recognizes the support and is grateful for the support sure. that people show. And mm -hmm. we all are, right? So right. that's kind of where we're at now. You know, when the album comes out and, you know, things, there's going to be lots of different things we can do. It's not even really creating value. It's just a, it's showing appreciation. Man. Sure. And that, that's that's what we're going to do is we're going to show appreciation in different ways when the album comes out. And, yeah, you know, 
free can be such a cheap word almost, you know, but to show appreciation, hey man, if you if you can get a free a model a shirt because you're one of the first people to, to share something or do whatever, it's still free from a band that you love and it's getting delivered to your place. You know what I mean? It's like it's a pretty cool thing, right? So there's there's a bunch of different things you can do to show your appreciation to the people who support you. Sure, sure. And I think um, the fans and the artists are realizing these days it's it's really a two way street. It is, you know, and just to, like you said, the appreciation, appreciation for supporting you and your music and your band and what you're up to, and you know, and just you shout, shout out to your fans and and, and things like that because it's they're the reason it's possible, and um, you know, when you play a show, it's it's not like playing in a studio, you know. There's that engagement, there's that energy yeah. exchange, and it's it's such a rush, um, so. You know, just to just to show appreciation of it all. That's it, I think it's important, and gratitude is that it's just such an integral part of um, a healthy mindset. Of course, yeah. You yeah. know, be be grateful every day. And you know, I wake up in the morning. I list five things right off the top of my head that I'm grateful for. Mm. You know, it just it just puts starts my day off great. It's like wow, life is never bad. You know, it's like it, there's always ways you can improve it, but gratitude is huge, and. Uh, it's a part of my daily life, do you, you have, know, and I always mm-hmm. recognize it. Do you have, um, so what, what, what would you say is the ultimate goal for your career if you have something that you could put your finger on? Um, I, I you know, the crazy thing is I've, I've achieved it in a sense because I'm, I'm a full-time musician. I'm making a living off it. Um, I, I love what I do. You know, I have a very supportive family, you know, support supportive wife and I mean, you know just there's so many great things about it and you know it's like the only thing that I haven't done yet but it's not time for it is I want to retire off music you know and that's a, a big goal that I have that's many 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 years away decades away you know so it's like I uh that that's kind of kind of where I'm at right now it's like just continue building this awesome path that I've I've built and future's exciting it's like lots of people are like oh you're not in dtp anymore oh what are you gonna do it's like what are you talking about i've been given a new road to work on that could, could turn into an even bigger thing and better thing for myself sure you know i will always be grateful for my time in dtp and everything i accomplished and who knows maybe that'll be the biggest thing i've ever done or you know it was just a step to even bigger things that are about to happen, which is what my gut feeling is, sure. you know? So, um, you know, it's like I'm I'm doing a monolith because I, I believe there's some pretty cool things about this band that could really up it a notch from where I last was. So you'd be crazy not to think that way if you're taking a risk on something, you know? It's like you got to give it your all. you got to give 150%. You can never stop believing. You can never... Uh, stop taking action and you definitely can't quit you know you got got to keep moving forward so for me you know it's like again I, I talked about experiences just keep on building those experiences keep on doing what I love every single day and uh you know I don't even know if I'll ever fully retire that that word is weird to me because a I'm a musician so I'll always play drums sure. you know what I mean I'll always write music you know, I always, I always like uh, writing with other people and working with other people. But, you know, uh, financially speaking, it'd be nice to get it to a point where it's like, you know what, I don't have to go on tour ever again if I don't want to. Right. You know, and and yeah, that that's that's kind of like a goal. You know, it's like to, to be able to go on vacation and, ah, oh, shit, let's talk about a reunion tour just because, you know, I miss going on the road. You know, right. <laughs> you know it's like whatever you know but uh i'd say that's where i'm at with my life i'm happy man i'm it's awesome you know i'm not gonna lie it's super challenging times right now it's like it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of work to get a brand new van going right but it's also fun and i'm learning a lot yeah it's like an entrepreneur with a startup you know that's that's it's an exciting time you know exciting challenging for sure you know that's it so 
you know, but life's awesome, man. You know, I'm, I'm about to go to Los Cabos, you know, it's like, yes. and, uh, you know, it's like, I'm about to release a, a record that I'm extremely proud of. And, you know, working with phenomenal musicians, working with a A class, you know, producer, just life's great, man. You know, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm just moving on onwards and upwards. And the, the cool thing about the future is you just don't know. What's the universe yeah. going to bring you? You don't know. But if, if you have that thought in your mind and, you, and you're racing towards it and you're doing everything you can to get there, you're giving yourself the best chance of achieving it. Definitely. And you know what? Just take action. Don't focus on the end result. Just go. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. You know what? I, I, I think you do everything you can do. And the universe works in incredible ways and it fulfills things in ways you can never imagine. You just got to do your part. That's believe in yourself, take action, don't quit. Right. So if yeah. you had one thing you can share with all musicians, what would it be? Those three steps. Those three steps, right? Those three steps. I know it sounds redundant. It's not oh, a no. Oh, no, Honestly, not at all. Yeah. The music industry is, you know, it, music industry is truly what you make it okay mm -hmm. my opa before he passed away um you know he he always said throughout his life but he said a lot near the end and uh he's like life is what you make it and for all those musicians who are who are coming out here and they hear oh man the music industry is so brutal it's so tough i wouldn't even get in into it you know, that's the worst thing and the worst advice you can hear because I was told that when I was growing up and I did exactly what I wanted to do with my life in the music industry. Was there a lot of hard work? Yeah, of course there was. It, it, you always got to bust your ass to get what you want out of life. But man, it's as hard as you make it to be. Are, mm -hmm. How hard are you working? Are you just writing songs in rehearsal space and going and playing at, at clubs hoping that so-and-so is going to see you that's a pretty dumb way about going about it there's much more you can do there's online presence there's uh there is getting out and playing live there is getting out and playing different countries not just your local city mm -hmm. like how far are you going to take it how hard are you going to work to get there because the hardest working bands are the ones that get signed right you know or the ones that that get noticed are the, the ones who build the following quicker because you know what? They toured all the states and all of Canada right. on an independent level. You know, so don't, if, if you're scared of hard work, then yeah, this industry is not for you. I don't think anything's you know, for you if you're scared of hard work. <laughs> that's what it's going to say next, but especially the music industry because mm -hmm. how many bands are out there? Too many to count. Okay. And that's what you're in competition with, mm -hmm. you know, but, if you really want to be in competition with anyone, truly be in competition with the person you were yesterday. Be the best version of yourself, and you will always have the best chance of succeeding. There it's very simple. So don't compare yourself to other bands. Compare yourself to the band you were yesterday. Compare yourself to the musician you were yesterday. How can you improve on that? And if you are putting forth your best product possible, you are by far already leaps and bounds ahead of, of the other bands out there. All these bands trying to be the next, you know, Metallica, the next, you know, Devin Townsend or the next Slipknot or whatever it's going to be. They're already fucking up. You want to know why? Because they, they're trying to be something that's already existing. You know, be a first rate version of yourself, not a second rate version of someone else. Mm. That's it. You know, I'll never forget, and this is this got ingrained in me in a very young age from my father. My my parents are like my biggest influences. Whenever I get asked that question, it's like my parents. You know, because mm -hmm. when I was younger, I was, I'll never forget when my this I learned every Rush album. Neil Peart was like one of my biggest influences, and I'm sitting there, I'm learning all these albums, and and uh, you know, it's just like basically trying to be Neil Peart at 14, 15 years old. You know, and Finally, I'm just like, oh, I can't get this. I was upset one day, and Dad's like, what are you trying to do? He's like, oh, I just want to be as good as Neil Peart. And he's like, Dad goes, you know what, Ryan? You will never be as good as Neil Peart. And I'm like, 
thanks for the support, Dad. Like, what the hell, right? He goes, because you know what? The only person who's going to be a better version than Neil Peart is Neil Peart tomorrow if he keeps doing what he does. Right. Focus on you. Take from your influences. Do not try to be them. Mm. Take from them, incorporate them in your own way, and be the best version of yourself. And I never forgot that. Can you hear flares of, of Neil Peart in my playing? Guarantee Do I sound like him? Not even close. Right. And you know what? Nothing is cooler than when you read drum magazines or, or reviews on the band or, or people talking about you in magazines or forums or the internet or whatever. And they're just like, oh, I love Ryan's cymbal work or Ryan's this or... It's just, oh, RBP and his style. It's about the cymbals or, what, or his feel or his big group. You know, like... That's the coolest thing because you know what? They're not talking about how I sound like someone else. Right. They're talking about me. They're talking about my style. Right. You know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel of drumming. Never was. You know, even when I got into those those polls for years about best prog drummer, I was just happy to be even mentioned. Are right. you kidding? I don't give a shit about winning it. You know, it's like I already won, man. You know, I, I was mentioned in these crazy polls. So I think I got to that point because I focused on being the best version of myself. I hear that. You know, so just don't forget that guys. It's a, this quote, it's Judy Garland actually. And the quote is be a first rate version of yourself, not a second rate version of someone else. That's awesome. That's a sweet note to end on. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, RVP drums, Ryan Venn, put in. Nice. <laughs> yes. Kill it, man. Kill it. <laughs> yeah, this was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on board, man. It's a great podcast and uh man, we could have talked another three hours, oh, you know. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah, so, maybe in the future know, we'll the episode like uh do another episode. Yeah, you know what? Let's do one once we get a monolith fired up and, and sure. touring and can have some more stories for you and you know that's that's my gut feeling, you know. So mm -hmm. but this this was a pleasure, man. Thanks very much for having Pleasure's me. Pleasure's all mine, man. See you soon. You bet. Have a great day. You too.